Hey there guys, Matthew George here with FreeCCNAWorkbook.com and in this video I'm going to be discussing Lab 1-3 which is identifying Cisco Router and Switch software. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what uh, software a Cisco device runs, whether it be a router or a switch, the software is called Cisco IOS. It stands for Cisco Internetwork Operating System. It is a Unix-based operating system. And just like an OS, uh, Cisco releases different types of versions and feature sets, kind of like Microsoft, you know. Microsoft has Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 uh, Professional, Home Edition, Ultimate, so on and so forth. And Cisco does practically the same thing, but they're not called Starter and Home Edition and stuff like that. That would be kind of stupid. Who would use a Cisco 2811 in their house with a Home Edition iOS? That's stupid. Not to mention the router is like two or three thousand dollars, so oh well. Nonetheless, I'm just trying to prove a point. And uh, hmm, where should I begin? <laughs> this this is going to be an interesting video. Da -de -da -de -da -de -da. Now, for this particular lab. Uh, ideally, you would want to uh, start and establish a console session with the device that you have, whether it be a physical device or a Gen S3 emulated device. And you will want to attempt to identify the iOS that that particular device is running. Whether or not you know what it is at the top of the head, or you don't know what it is, you should still be able to identify Cisco iOS just by looking at the names. Being a network engineer in the field, uh, it would greatly benefit you to actually understand the naming conventions as well as the features including and specific uh, feature sets and versions. You know, it's one of the biggest mistakes that I see made uh, among CCNA candidates and Cisco students in general is that, you know, they'll buy a lab router off eBay and they'll, it'll come with this iOS. Uh, they don't know what it is, however, you know, they, they get this lab workbook and they try to go through some of the labs in the workbook and all of a sudden they run into issues saying uh, the error does not, I mean, the command does not exist or, or stuff like that, you know. And because of that, you know, they're, they're completely confused and they get, you know, they get frustrated and oftentimes that frustration can lead to CCNA students uh, in the beginning just giving up because, you know, oftentimes some of this stuff is very confusing, and and one of the biggest issues I see being done is uh, an individual will buy a router and it would just have IP base or something on it, and they'll try to go to do they'll try to set up router on a stick, which is a common CCNA lab, and when they try to enable dot one Q encapsulation on an Ethernet interface, it will not let them, and this is due to the iOS feature set that is running on the on the platform because it does not support .1Q trunking interfaces on a fast Ethernet or even a 10 megabit per second interface. But uh, hopefully by reading this lab it will definitely help you understand the differences in the different iOS versions of feature sets because when you're let's, let's say you're the head of or you're like a project manager so to speak and you've been tasked by your your boss to, you know, get a quote to build out a new branch office. And there's particular requirements uh, such as features that will be needed in this branch office. For example, you, you need to get a 2811 and you need to set up, you know, the iOS firewall as, as well as uh, IPS, uh, Intrusion Prevention System. Now, unless you're familiar with the iOS features, chances are you're just going to buy the cheapest Cisco 2011 you can find and you're going to get it in, you know, you're going to tell your boss, oh yeah, everything's good to go, we're ready to deploy it, you know, we can we can get ready and go forward with the uh, the project. You know, the day comes and, you, and you're out there and you're installing this router in the rack and you're configuring it and you go to configure iOS firewall and all of a sudden the iOS is rejecting the commands. Most likely this is because the router is running IP base, which is the base feature set included on a Cisco router. You don't get iOS firewall for free and you don't get IPS for free. You actually have to pay for those features. 
And if you've made the mistake of buying the cheapest 2811 without knowing what version of iOS or what license that particular platform comes with, then you're going to make a very costly mistake on your on your part. And because of that mistake, it can lead to pretty bad consequences by your company. I mean, you can cost the company money, in which case, you know, they can terminate your position. I mean, it's, it's happened many a times. Not to me, but I've heard stories of this particular scenario occurring. Now, in this video, I'm going to be doing a demonstration using a Cisco 2651 for the for the later part of the video. But initially, I wanted to uh, follow the website, the web page here. And there is uh, two ways to identify the Cisco iOS if your console would into a device or if you have an exec uh, session established. First off, if you're first booting the router, typically when the router boots, you'll see something along the lines of this right here. And this right here can pretty much identify what iOS the machine is running. Uh, the key is, is actually understanding what these letters here stand for. There's a nice little chart on this page, which I'll get to, that identifies what features are included in this image. The other way of identifying the iOS on a particular platform is using the show version command. And now this command right here is probably one of the most popular commands you'll use as far as show commands uh, for identif identification of particular platforms and software. Now, you know, if, if you don't know what iOS a particular hardware is running, whether it be a Cisco router or switch, chances are you're, you're just going to assume, which is a big issue, you're going to assume that a platform has a particular feature available for you to configure. The show version command is, is very helpful in identifying iOS. It shows the version of the iOS in this example here. This is a 3620 as identified right here as a C3620. And it's running 12.3 release 25. And you can see the feature set right here is a bunch of letters and numbers. To identify this feature set, I've compiled a nice little chart down here. And this chart is the old naming convention, meaning that anything prior to 12.3 will use this naming convention right here. So if you go up, or actually, uh, where is it at? Here we go. And as you can see, IK903S7 is the file name. So you can actually identify this iOS feature set by looking at this chart here. As you can see, I is IP. K is da -de -da -de -da, cryptographic services. That's not what comes first. Yeah, it does. Huh. IPK is cryptographic services. There are two different types of cryptographic images. There's K8, which is the weak cryptographic image. This is oftentimes used for export to third world countries uh, that the government does not want to uh, or does not care about, you know, weak cryptographic services because DES can easily be cracked. Uh, 56 56-bit DES that is. Triple DES on the other hand is very hard to crack however I'm sure the NSA has machines in their basement that can crack this uh, but K9 is the more advanced cryptographic image and that is commonly what is used today in most images that require SSH. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now there's a nice little breakout of the image name here. If you go up and check out the show version again, you can actually see where it says the system file is loaded from Flash, which is the image location where it's where it's stored at. And this is the the full image name. And I broke out this little. I have a nice little breakout of the image name here. Uh, first off, it's the hardware, which is a C3620 uh, feature set, which is IP uh, plus. Uh, K9, which is cryptographic uh, triple DES SSH, uh, IDS with iOS firewall and no voice. Yeah. Anyhow, I'll explain that all in a minute. Uh, but nonetheless, it talks about the memory location. There's different spots where this image can be loaded from. The 2500 series platforms load the the iOS image from Flash, whereas newer platforms will actually decompress the image from flash into memory and execute the the iOS software from memory because it's faster. 
And Z here is the compression format. There's different types of compression formats, whether it be a zip or a stack. Um, I think I got a list here somewhere. Thought I had one. Ah, here we go. Uh, yeah, mzip, which is X. Uh, these can be all down some different compressions. However, the most common you'll see is the Z, which is a zip compression. And, of course, at the end you'll have the, 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 man, I'll get it out in a minute, the file version, which is 12.3, release 25, and this is a binary file. Uh, let me see what all I'm missing here. I don't want to skip through some stuff. Oh, yeah, the official name. Yeah, you was probably wondering how I memorized that stuff earlier. When you, when you work with iOS so much, and, you know, Cisco routers in general, it tends to just stick in your head, you know. But, nonetheless, the official name of this image here that I'm using on the page for, you know, uh, demonstrations purpose uh, is 12325 IP firewall IDS plus triple DES IP set with no voice. So, and as you can see here, I did break out the image features as I is IP, K9 is strong cryptography, and O3 is iOS firewall intrusion detection, uh, and S7, S is commonly a plus feature, so uh, for example, you'll have a, let's say you have a 2500 series platform, and 12.3, there's actually three images that you can get, I believe, if I remember correctly, there's IP, which is the base image, there's IS, which is IP+, plus, and then, if I remember correctly, there is remote or terminal, something like that. I know there's a specific image for for uh, access services or something like that, if I remember correctly. I'd have to look it up, but nonetheless, uh, different, as, as with any iOS previous to 12.3, you'll have different naming conventions that represent different features. And it's idea to memorize the most common ones. Uh, just because, you know, it's 2011 as the creation of this video, doesn't mean that you're going to run into 12.4 on every machine that you work with. I've actually seen lots of Cisco routers out in the field that run 12.2 still. And, and 12.2 abides by this naming convention here. So, moving on, I've created a nice little chart here for the 12.3T or later iOS naming convention. As of 12.3T and later, Cisco decided to rename the, the iOS image feature sets so that people can more easily understand them. You know, it's actually easier to understand, you know, IP base or IP voice or vast security versus a bunch of letters and numbers. So, but nonetheless, this little chart here is a uh, basically a tree of feature sets. You have your IP base, which is basically prior to 12.3t would be just I in the iOS name. So this would be like C3620-I-MZ-or.12325 uh, uh, dash dash, uh, bin. Uh, but it keeps going up, and as you can see here, it goes up to IP voice, and any of the features in IP voice also include the features of IP base, so basically you're stacking it on top of the other feature set. And you have the service provider services, which include the features of IP voice and IP base. And from here, you have a whole other branch of feature sets. You have advanced security, uh, which is, you know, basically the K9 version of iOS. It includes strong cryptographic services such as SSH, iOS firewall, uh, SSL VPN termination if you have 12.4T. Uh, it includes uh, land to land tunnels for IPsec support, so on and so forth. An enterprise base will include different types of features used in, uh, in enterprises such as addition of multi-protocols including IBM, IPX, Apple Talk, so on and so forth. Oftentimes, enterprise services and stuff like that would be used in a university environment where you have different types of hardware, whether it be, you know, IBM AS400, or you have uh, Apples that run Apple Talk still, you have IPX, and stuff like that for educational purposes. And because of those different types of platforms on the network, you have to have a specific 
network device, the router or switch, uh, to support those type of communications, those protocols. Uh, like I said, it keeps going up, and basically Advanced Enterprise Services is the ultimate version of ILS. It includes all of the features in ILS for a specific platform. Most commonly in the field, you will either deal with IP base, IP voice, advanced security, or advanced IP services. Those are probably by far the most four popular images that you'll be using. However, there is some some places that use advanced enterprise services, and if you work in a service provider environment, you'll most likely see service provider services or enterprise services or advanced IP services. Now, I broke out the different types of uh, names here, so that way you see base is an entry level image. Uh, services include the addition of IP telepathy services, MPLS, voice over IP, voice over frame relay, and ATM. Advanced is basically the addition of crypto cryptography. Uh, it includes VPN services, iOS firewall, triple DES, AES, 256, SSH, uh, iOS IPsec, intrusion detection services, uh, a list of security stuff basically. And Enterprise, like I said earlier, is basically a, a feature set that includes a bunch of multi-protocols, whether it be IBM, IPX, Apple Talk, uh, stuff like that. Moving on, now, now that you have a good firm understanding of, of iOS for routers, so to speak, we are going down to the switches. Now, prior to 12.2... 25, I believe, if I remember correctly, I may be wrong. The switch naming convention was very similar to the routing naming convention here, and it was very confusing. However, lighter images use a newer naming convention, which is very similar to the iOS naming convention here as of 12.3t and later. And they did this, you know, because they wanted to unify a naming convention, so to speak, and they wanted to make it easier to understand. Now there's different types of feature sets for a switch, as is there with a the router. Uh, switches obviously have different types of features they can support as well. Uh, as a base, you know, you just have IP base for a switch, which is basically the same kind of stuff you get with a router, just for a switching platform. The IP base just includes basic switching functionality, uh, support for switch virtual interfaces if it's a layer three device, a single management interface. Uh, however, eh, I'm thinking different iOS. But anyhow, uh, from IP base you move up to IP services, very similar to the tree I have here. And IP services includes all the all the features that are in IP base as well as the newer addition features in IP services. Uh, IP services include routing functionality now. Now you have the ability for a layer three functionality if you're using a multi-layer switch. Uh, IP services are commonly only found on multi-layer switches. Uh, typically the layer 2 switches such as a 2960 will use a LAN base or a LAN light, which is strictly a layer 2 switch. However, there is a newer image for the 2960 that supports static routing and I believe RIP. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, if I remember correctly that's what I read. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, anyhow, where was that? Advanced IP services, which was uh, not basically discontinued or end of life in the service for that naming convention as of 12.250 SE on a, on a fixed configuration catalyst switch, which included the 3550s, 3560s, 3750s, so on and so forth. As of 12.250, you only have IP base and IP services. The difference between IP services and advanced IP services at the time prior to 12.250 was the inclusion of IP version 6 features uh, and different types of uh, IP version 6 routing protocols, stuff like that. I'm trying to remember this stuff at the top of my head. <laughs> uh, 
But after 12.250, the Advanced IP Services was killed off, and all of the features in Advanced IP Services was moved into IP Services. So if you're running a switching platform in production that has IP Services on it, let's say you have a 3560 uh, EMI, uh, or 3550 EMI, um, and it's and you have IP services on it, and, you, and you're considering moving to IP versus 6, it's actually worth the upgrade. You know, because you're getting additional features which previously would have costed you money just by updating the switch. Now, I, I can give two examples here of naming conventions for the, uh, the newer iOS. As you can see here, uh, Cisco 2800 series uh, platform, Advanced Enterprise Services K9. Uh, which is the cryptography. There is one thing that carried over from the old naming convention to the new naming convention, which was the uh, the K9. Uh, if you have a cryptographic image with the new naming convention, you'll see K9 at the end of it. This is basically just a an implicit name, just practically to say, hey, I have advanced cryptography, cryptography services, such as AES-256 uh, and stuff like that. Uh, also an IP based image name here as well. So. I have three examples here of Switch iOS. As you can see, I have the Advanced Enterprise, Advanced IP Services iOS name here. And have IP Services K9 name here as well as IP base. That just gives you an idea of the different names of the iOS for a Switch. For this particular platform, it's a 3750, as identified here. Uh, the switch naming convention will always start with the platform, is, you know, same as it is with the router, and it will follow with the uh, the feature set. And if it has cryptography services that have K9 in the image, then it will have where the image is loaded from. So this one here is loaded from from RAM, and as you can see here, this image is a zip compressed as a Z, and it's 12 to release 44 SC. Uh, yeah, IP base is formerly known as the SMI image on a Cisco 3550, as well as uh, EMI image is also known as IP services, as I see here. And as I was talking about earlier, yeah, IP services include uh, IP version 6 routing, IP version 6 ACL support, uh, just a bunch of IP version 6 in general. However, like I said, the advanced IP services was discontinued as a 12. 250 and it, all the features of it in advanced IP services was moved into advanced IP, or IP services. Uh, I'm going to get to some of the naming of the hardware. Oftentimes, if you look on the back of the Cisco switch, you'll see the name, whether it be like a C3560-24PS-S. Uh, in a short and sweet manner, this is basically saying, hey, this is a Cisco 3560 platform. It has 24 ports of 10 to 100 because there's no G here. If it was a gigabit switch, it would be 24G-PS. The P stands for power, and well, the PS stands for power, and the S is the standard image. And as you can see here, I have a 3750, and this is a 48 port TS which is a standard switch that does not have power and this is a dash E so this is basically the EMI version of the uh, 3750 in which case uh, the iOS would be IP services uh, da -da -da -da, moving on there's a bunch of information in this lab <laughs> I forgot how long this lab is but hopefully the video here is helping you assimilate a lot of this information. I did update the uh, the page a while back to include iOS 15.0, uh, which was released on October 1st of the year before last, I believe, 2009. I need to change that. October 1st, 2009. Yep. And basically that is the next mainline release. Uh, it's pr practically, you know, the same type of release of 12.3, 12 12.4, 12 uh, 15.0 is what comes after 12.4, so technically there's no 12.5, it's just 15.0.
Now, as of 15.0, the image is universal, which is uh, basically all the features are included in a single image. This is Cisco's new way of fighting piracy. Oftentimes, you know, people will buy base platforms and they will, since they have a service contract, they'll get on the Cisco website and they'll download, you know, the advanced enterprise services or the advanced IP services uh, for switches or routers and not pay Cisco for the licensing. Because of this, Cisco is losing billions of dollars a year. So therefore, Cisco said, okay, I've had enough and I'm going to start, you know, requiring individuals to license Cisco devices on a per-platform basis. Now, the licensing in 15.0 is very similar to the licensing on an, on an ASA or a PIX. Uh, on an ASA and a PIX firewall, you have to uh, put in a license key. And if you don't have this license key, you know, it limits your functionality of the firewall. And on the contrary, 15.0 does the same thing. Since 15.0 is now a universal image, all of the features are included in the image, but you can only use those features if you have the license file installed on the Cisco device. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but each license file is different per Cisco device. It's actually based off of the hardware. So therefore, you cannot copy the license file from 120 or I mean 129.11 to another 29.11. It just won't work. So therefore, you now have to pay Cisco to use Cisco iOS if you want to use the advanced features. Uh, I think, eh, well, anyhow, I think I'll discuss the switches as well. Cisco also applied the same technique. Uh, the Cisco iOS licensing files to the new E-series switches, the 3560Es and 3750Es. If you purchase these switches, these switches have 10 gig links on them instead of, of uh, 4 SFPs like the uh, traditional 3560 or 3750s. Uh, if you purchase these switches, uh, the cheaper switch obviously will come with just IP base license. However, it will have the universal image you just won't have, you know, full routing functionality. You have to purchase the license. Whereas the previous switches, such as the 3550 and just a regular 3560, you could just load a different iOS and it would boot the newer feature set. I believe that's probably all I'm going to touch up on here. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a few things in, in iOS, uh, like I was talking about earlier. I didn't mean to do that. <coughs> Let me load up. Where is it at? I know it's one of these. Let me fix my little problem here. <sighs> As you can see in here, I'm having a minor little problem. That's not cool. You know, it does help if I turn my terminal server on. Man, I forgot to turn that baby on. So now i got to wait for that thing to boot up. Let me see if I can find some more boring stuff to talk about. <laughs> uh, I'm probably pretty sure by now that this video is starting to get pretty boring. But like I said, understanding different types of iOS versions and feature sets are going to save you a lot of costly mistakes in the future when you become a certified engineer, especially when you're working on equipment in the field. You don't want to make stupid mistakes like that, especially ones that are going to cost your company a lot of money and potentially cost you your job. So, uh, 
I think I mentioned everything on the page that I want to talk about. I would definitely recommend that you read through this page entirely as there's a lot of information that I probably didn't mention. However, I'm pretty sure I touched up on all of the most important stuff. So, let me just wait for my access server to boot. I can't believe I didn't turn that thing off. Man. Come on. Oh yes, there is one thing that I forgot to mention, I see here. When you're dealing with switches, commonly you will find the enterprise services and advanced enterprise services on chassis platforms. Uh, such as the 4500 and the 6500. Forgot to mention that. Uh, advanced IP services you can find on the chassis as well as as fixed configuration switches such as the 3560 and 3750. So, anywho, let's check this out. Ah, there we go, finally. Alright, now there was a command that I was going to demonstrate to you as I was talking about in the beginning of the video, which is show version. This command is very helpful and it will help you identify the iOS that is currently running on a particular platform. As you can see here, this is a 2600 series router and you can actually identify the platform here by 2650YXM. And this platform is running advanced IP services with a cryptographic image set. If you, if you run advanced IP services, it's going to have cryptographic features regardless. Uh, the K9 is just something that was carried over from the old naming convention. And this is 12.4, release 15, tech train 14. So, tech trains, which I did not talk about. Ah, I forgot to talk about that too, didn't I? Tech train images are basically a beta version of Cisco iOS. Meaning that oftentimes when Cisco releases new hardware and stuff like that, uh, they will release tech train images for testing purposes before you know they release uh, particular support for hardware on a main on a mainline image. Mainline images are way more stable. However, if you're an early adopter of newer technology, Oftentimes you will be stuck using the tech train images. And tech train images are buggy from time to time. And sometimes they do crash. But that is the risk you gotta take when you're running a tech train image. Uh, other than that, I think that's the only command I'm gonna demonstrate. So hopefully this video has not been too boring for you. And hopefully you've learned quite a bit from it. And if you ever have any, you know, questions regarding different iOS features, uh, feel free to uh, post a question here on the, the page, and I'll respond to you. Also, there is a website you can check out, which is called Cisco Feature Navigator. And with Cisco Feature Navigator, you can uh, select different types of images, or you can actually just copy an image name and search by image name. And the Cisco Feature Navigator will actually identify every single feature that is available in a specific iOS image. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, new build outs, or if you're new to Cisco iOS and you don't know what features are included in what images, it's best to use the Feature Navigator uh, before making any major decisions as far as you know, building a new, uh, new branch office or something like that. Oftentimes when you use Cisco devices in a lab, especially CCNA or CCMP lab, or rather BCCIE lab, you will most of the time want to run the latest and greatest, which in most cases would be advanced enterprise services, uh, or IP services for a switch, whether it be the 3560 or the 3550, which are the two most popular Cisco lab switches. But because you want to run these images, uh, you'll have all of the features available for you to learn. 
it's, it's kind of hard to learn different types of features if you're using IP base because IP base doesn't support SSH or MPLS or you know iOS firewall and stuff like that you know so uh, I believe I've touched up on everything that I want to discuss in this video this video is probably getting pretty long by now so with all that being said like I said I hope this video has been educational and be sure to join the Facebook group page and also uh, check out the YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so that way when I post new videos you will get updates via email. And whenever I make changes to the website I will post the, uh, the changes I've made on the Facebook uh, page for this website. So I believe that is it for this video so thanks for viewing.